So guys, I'm up at the Bancroft Jamboree 2015 for the next uh, little while here and I just, um, I'm up promoting my book, Rockhound and Experience of the North. And uh, I wanted you to just have a little look at the Jamboree and uh, just see what it's all about. And definitely, if you haven't attended yet, you need to. And if not, definitely next year. So despite the embarrassment of being photographed with the hound here, as you can see, seems like a really good jamboree this year, the 2015 uh, Bancroft Jamboree. I'm walking around early in the morning here, just checking out everything being set up, uh, meeting a lot of people from, from the YouTube channel. Looks like we've got some sliced neff right here. I think this is garnet. Oh. Yeah, I think it's garnet. Peridot crystals, or looks like they're smaller, probably not the Pakistan ones. Where's your peridot from? Where's this from? Pakistan. From Pakistan. Do you get them in larger sizes? Not, not no, you don't, eh? Okay. No, not really. Getting my garnet weighed here. Five. How much? Twenty-five. Twenty-five dollars for that? Twenty-five gram. Twenty-five gram. So. 25, 35 dollars. It's beautiful. Thank you. Maybe I come back. This is, uh, this is my inspiration here, Michael Adamowitz, for some of the of the sites that I'm visiting, and just happen to bump into him here. So. Yeah, excellent. Good to see you, Michael. So where we're going to be going today is the Great Monk Mine, and uh, what uh, was predominantly mined for is corundum. More about corundum in a couple of minutes now. Um, we have, which I really like using for sulfides, is a street plate. Um, hematite gives you a really nice rust color. Uh, Magnetite is going to give you a more blackish color. Yeah. So the ones that so the ones that that are most prized from this area are the ones that are from uh, that are on the white crested barite. Uh -huh. And uh, and they're beautiful things. They're they're vanadium mineral. It's vanadium that makes them red. Right. So that, vanadi okay, vanadium is, okay, I understand that now. And you're getting the barite from? The barites are from northeastern Morocco. The province is Nador, and the, the locality is called Sidi Lassen. And uh, they're, they're actually, they sleep, the, the miners actually sleep in their caves where they're, where they're mining them. And like you see these, these scenes where you've got these clefts halfway up a cliff, you've got this little ledge and tent, 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 and then they go into the walls and, and they're mining them out. And they're so delicate. Most specimens don't make it out without significant damage, and that's what's really rare about these. So there's three distinct areas at the Jamboree. Uh, there's the curling rink, which you come to first as you come in from the town. There's the hockey arena, and the outdoor trading stalls, which specialize in rough specimens. And this is where you'll get the deals, and you'll meet the most interesting characters of the Rockhound world. No, we're trying to find gold, not stone. Gold little specks of shiny stuff. Don't lean on the table. <laughs> cool, it's starting to go. Too hot. First thing we do is, uh, this is how you hold the pan. These are called riffles away from you. Okay. Now, gold's very heavy, so we're going to dig deep in the bottom of the creek and grab a handful of gravel. Dig deep. Don't be afraid of that. No crocodiles in here. No. Toronto, we're going to talk about the Niagara Falls area, where, believe it or not, you can actually go mineral hunting. And I'm going to kind of work my way through. I'm going to go up to Crystal Lake, talk about Crystal Lake, which is on the edge of the Canadian Shield. And uh, we'll kind of slide across to Maynock. We'll go up through El Dorado. We've got a, an interesting little video of the El Dorado gold mine, or also known as the Richardson mine. Uh, We'll head up to Grace Lake, which is a, quite a nice area to go, and I know you guys said you went there. I don't know what you found, but I'm going to show you what I found at Grace Lake. And uh, it's some just beautiful tremolite and diopside that you can find there. And I'll tell you how to find it, because one of the things I really want to do, I know when I was first rock hounding, I had a problem between what I was seeing in a museum, what I was seeing in books, all that kind of thing, and what I was actually finding. Because what I was finding is junk. And what you can actually what you can actually find if you know where to look and how to look can just be absolutely amazing stuff. And I, so as I say, I'm closing the gap. That's what I want to do here between what you're seeing elsewhere and what you're finding yourself. 
when my first book came out in 2005 with um, uh, Boston Mills, and that was called uh, Rock Watching, the Adventures Above and Below Ontario. But I kind of wanted a little more control myself in terms of what I put out, and um, so I started self-publishing. And there's many good things that go with self-publishing. Uh, one is I can entirely pick what I want. I don't have to compromise with anyone or for anything. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Yep. Also, let's give it a try. Get a little video. Um, hopefully. Oh, would you like the light turn Ah, uh, yes, please. Yeah. Yes, please. The celestite is from Madagascar, uh -huh. and uh, so the amylites, the, the amylites Madagascar. From Madagascar as well. That, that's an extremely good price, fifty bucks. Forty-six years ago, uh -huh. playing my guitar right. on the bumper of my father's car. Okay. At the Bancroft Jamboree when it was up in uh, Birch Creek. Have you collected those opals yourself? No. You haven't, eh? I've collected a lot of Bancroft material uh -huh. and Manitoulin and Wilberforce, this whole area. And then I yeah. traded to get a variety for custom. Okay. I've seen you for years in a row. I've, I've got pictures of you from years back. 40 years I've been here now. Wow. This is just hard to believe. Just check this out. 750 bucks and it's from Madagascar. Massive piece of labradorite. And they're special because I cut them special and tumble them. They take more time. And they're perfect for pendants. You find all these locally? Uh, no, nope. these are you from uh, Maniwaki, Quebec. Maniwaki, yeah. They look like a lot of these look local, like Titanite and Malibu. I can't say Malibu. Yeah, it's nope, not not Bear Lake. No, not no, eh. No, it's all Maniwaki stuff. Oh, good. No. Yeah. No, a volume two. No, I'm just telling about the story of the big Titanite locale uh, pocket that I had opened up in Bear Lake about ten years ago. Okay. And the seven best specimens went to the Canadian Museum of Nature, and all the others were sold at the uh, Gem and Mineral Show in Ottawa in September of that same year. How, it was how about big were they? Ten years ago. How big were the specimens? Some of the specimens were about hand size with hand sized Titanites, all in rosettes. Oh, Those beautiful. are the ones that went to the Canadian Museum. Uh, some were estimated to be between a thousand and two thousand dollars a piece. Jeez. Yeah. Um, what what makes it so that something's worth more okay. than something else? I, I sold the better pieces. See the crystals? Yes. I don't know if you can get. I can the light. see that. Yeah. Okay, that's uncoated silver crystals. Uh huh. And when they're like that, they're so rare from cobalt. Okay. The cobalt camp. It's just. I've been up there a couple of times. Yeah. In lifetime, found one rock. Uh -huh. You would just be in your glory. Okay. It's it's so rare. I worked for a mining company where uh -huh. we spread rock for five weeks yeah. with all the big equipment. I got half the rock yeah. a day. So I've got some of this and more to cut now, but it's so rare to ever find a piece. Somebody said they paid you like that, or at least I think I heard you say that well, yesterday. That's what they did. <laughs> did they? I got four or five week contracts. Uh -huh. and the last five week contract, I got half the rock we ran. And this is with big heavy machinery and about half a dozen other guys. And okay. the whole thing after spreading it out in an area like this, uh -huh. I ran over it with a metal detector and old BFO and uh -huh. uh, picked up all the rock and then they'd spread it again. And we did that for 10 hours a day, five days a week for seven or for five weeks. And I got half the rock. Wow. And so this that is it, means eh? I've got stuff that even uh -huh. I never had in my collection before. Not actually right. Kid Creek and stuff. But to get pure silver like this is 20 times rarer than gold. Unbelievable. Do you in live in Cobalt? Uh, actually, just an hour's north. In Kirkland. Do you know Ralph uh, Schroeder? I don't you think so. I'm really bad at names. Okay, okay. Yeah, he was. Uh, he used to live in Cobalt. He, he I kind of knew him kind of well. He used to go up and. Never found like that. Four, what is so, it? 420 million ounces or something, wasn't it? Uh, it's on the sheet of paper. Oh, it's somewhere down there, eh? Yeah. And uh, but then what happened is the money that came from Cobalt started. Yeah. They, they went to Timmins. The people okay. Like Lola Timmins and them actually had uh -huh. the money from Cobalt. Ruan was started from the money from Cobalt. Okay. Um, a large part of the mining companies and stuff in the world had their origin in Cobalt. It's okay. spread everywhere. And I heard a story that I hadn't heard until a couple of days ago. Somebody else told me that uh -huh. when in 1903, 1904, when Cobalt was found, uh -huh. they were selling stocks in the street in New York outside the exchange. You collect all of these? Yes. Did, eh? From Ontario? Uh, all except for that yellow uh, low vein coal miners hat there, yep. Where do you find all this stuff? Uh, every year. I take a couple of weeks off and my son goes with me and we drive up to northern Ontario. And Beautiful, man. That's amazing stuff. you find much in the way of uh, like carbide lights and so on? Yeah. You do, eh? Whereabouts? Places, uh, usually yard sales and oh. flea markets. Okay. Uh, I've picked up good ones even down around Madoff. 
Sudbury, even Peterborough. What's this thing here? It's a transit theodolite. A what? A, a transit or a theodolite. Okay. So it, How's it work? Well, surveyors would use it. Okay. Uh, when they're measuring in, like the, the markers for a mine or a, a so when they're surveying a mine, uh -huh. what's different about this from a normal uh, survey instrument, they call it a transit because if you take a straight line there, say oh, yeah. feet, and you want to go back that way, uh -huh. without doing anything, you just, uh, sorry, I guess this is... Uh, no, that's cool. My grandfather used to be a, a mine surveyor in um, South Africa, and the um, yep. used to be the deepest mine in the world, it was called ERP. Hope you paid for that. Uh, <laughs> nice pine. How much? 180 bucks. Oh, what a deal. Somebody I've already done a lot of wholesale business with. Nice. You see, you see the stone inside of it? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I see that. Yeah. Nice. So, on the right-hand side of the road, we're coming up to the swamp where the largest black star sapphire has ever been found. Right there, if you could believe that. Uh, just right below Cankerite Hill and of course no trip to Bancroft is complete without stopping at Andy Christie's Princess Sodalite Mine.